This week, we're catching up with one house hunter who was struggling to make any headway in Hertfordshire. Oh. <laughs> and a couple who were floored by the manic London property market. I just haven't got that feeling. <laughs> this is the house for you. But despite our frustrations... Uh, I wouldn't use this as an office. We're back to find out if there's been happy endings all round. I absolutely love this place and I'm here to stay. I don't think we would have got something without you. This week, we're catching up with a couple who were switching life in Wales for one in the big smoke, where properties were selling faster than they could view. Our other house hunter had almost given up on her search after losing out on her dream home. So, it was up to Kirsty and I to try and sort things out. Professional rugby player Alex and his teacher wife Sarah were leaving Wales for West London while sales account manager Naomi was looking for her dream home in Hemel Hempstead. Self-employed 35-year-old Naomi moved here seven years ago with her beloved cat Leah. And for the past three, she's been running her own sales business from her two-bedroom flat. I've completely outgrown the flat. I can't spend 20 hours in one room every day. It's driving me nuts. I just need a proper home office. She's determined to stay in the area, having now forged strong ties. And friendships are not her only forte. In a few months, she'll be competing for the title of England's strongest woman. And that involves things like atlas stones, truck pulling, car deadlift, log press, um, and all those kind of things that you see the guys do on telly at Christmas. But the might of the Hertfordshire property market has thus far defeated our strong woman. Five months ago, she had an offer accepted on her ideal home, but the vendors changed their minds about selling. Prices have risen here by 15% in the last year, but Naomi still hankers after the dream. It was so cute and cottagey from the outside, and the inside, the whole thing was modern front to back. It had room for my pole. It was literally everything that I ever wanted. Did she just say pole? Yes, she did. Slightly unusually, I really need space for a pole because I do pole sports in the evening, um, which is something that I really enjoy. I'm not that great, so I really want to be able to practice the moves. It needs to be in a normal living space, so not tucked away in a bedroom and then you don't use it. That's certainly a new one for us. Nice to know that even we haven't seen it all yet. But to be able to pole vault Nemi into a future home, I need to be sure she's aware of the present market. You're now in a situation where your ideal house is at about 400,000, 400, 410. And your budget is 350 and just a tiny bit above 350, sort of 360 maybe. Yeah. The house that you loved and lost, how much damage do you think this has done? I know you're not meant to move in, but mentally I had moved in and I'd picked out wallpaper and furniture and there was no indication it was going wrong. And then just like that, it was gone. <laughs> Literally, if anyone, anything, is going to make me turn into the Incredible Hulk, it's people who decide they're not selling. Should I be scared? <laughs> Don't worry, Phil. Green's not really my colour. Battling a lost dream is always a tough one. Surely a strong woman and the Incredible Hulk can muscle their way into the right property. Naomi has set her budget at £350,000, with some slight wiggle room upwards. Ideally, she wants a living area large enough to accommodate regular pole dancing practice. And two bedrooms and a separate office for her business. External character is important, and she'd prefer not to have to do work, giving me quite the search to contend with. I'd even call it a polar expedition, Kirsty, but I'm sure you can handle it. Our other search was in the cutthroat, fast-moving market of London for 20-something newlyweds, Alex and Sarah. It was love at first sight, yeah. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> For the past two years, they've been happily living in the seaside idyll of Panath, in Alex's homeland of Wales. It was ideal because it was, it was very close to the high street. We had a really nice community, and we just want to try and replicate that as, mm. as much as possible. But when professional rugby player Alex was signed by a London club, <laughs> and Londoner Sarah was offered her first teaching job back in the big smoke, they jumped at the chance to move. I'm really excited to come back to London. I have really missed my family, especially with all my new nieces and nephews now. It'd be lovely to spend more time with them. 
So the couple left their Welsh home and for the last few weeks, they've had to shack up with Sarah's parents. Leaving Wales is a little bit sad. Obviously, all my family are there. But having sold their three-bed home in Wales, there's no going back. To afford London prices, the pair have had to more than double their mortgage. It's a whole different game in this city. The market just moves so quickly that if we leave it another month, we're, our budget is getting smaller and smaller, essentially. There is a sense of rush, isn't there? Yeah, a bit of urgency. And as if the market's not enough to tackle, with so much change happening so quickly, they haven't had the chance to view any London properties in person. Roll up your sleeves, Phil. This one is going to keep you busy. I mean, life, by all accounts, sounded pretty dreamy back in Wales. Mm, it was, isn't it? Yeah, we yeah. enjoyed it, though. It was a, it's a really nice little little town we lived in. So, yeah, hopefully mm. find something quite similar. Find something quite similar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm> serious. <laughs> House prices are, per square foot are three times more expensive here than where you've come from. <laughs> so that, that is a difficult thing to adjust to. You're going to yes. pay a lot more for, for a lot less. less. Well, let's talk about what, what you'd like to find okay. and, and where it'll be. A period property is definitely our preference, mm. isn't it? Two plus bedrooms. And we like to entertain guests as well, so okay. a space for that as well would be lovely. So yeah, you do space. some work, you're up for that? Yeah, yeah, if it's a small kitchen, for instance, and there's a wall and he's knocking down, quite happy to do that. We've got a budget of 410,000. But yeah, we realise that that's not going to go too far here in London. Things that you see over the next couple of days won't, they just won't be available next week. Okay. If you see something that you like, we're going to have to jump in with both feet. That's okay. We, we're ready to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Let's do it. They're keen, but to get on the ladder in this cutthroat market, they will need to deliver on decisiveness. For their £410,000, Sarah and Alex would prefer a two bedroom house with as much character as possible. They want a good-sized living space, but aren't afraid of doing work to get the layout they'd like. And Alex would love a garden with a shed. He's a man after my own heart. For a couple in their 20s, they have an impressive amount of money. But as well as a long wish list, their hearts are set on the popular but pricey rice slip. It's a convenient spot between both Alex and Sarah's work. And to get them what they want, I'll also be testing them with areas a little further afield. However, I plan to ease them in gently by kicking off their search in their number one area. Ricelip Manor is an affluent part of Ricelip, just a stone's throw from the bustling high street. Being just 15 miles from the city makes the spacious character property they ideally want expensive. But I've managed to find this 1930s mid-terrace. Yeah. First thoughts of the outside and, and where we are? Yeah, lovely, lovely quiet street. Yeah, yeah I like it. Yeah, really yes, nice. like it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sunny responses from them both. And it gets even brighter inside. Modernised throughout, the house has the minimum two bedrooms they need and entertaining space. But the kitchen certainly couldn't accommodate Alex's whole rugby team. The back garden, on the other hand, could probably hold a scrum and a comfortable 30 grand under budget. There's scope here to make it what they want inside. Right, so your first London viewing. <laughs> I particularly liked it because, because of the layout. Yeah. That's the living room. Dining room here leads to the kitchen. It really kind of... Okay. It works. Yeah, mm. that's nice. I think ideally we'd be after something with a little bit more character, but it's, it's definitely not the end of the world. No, no. It's a bit of a blank canvas. Yeah, it is. Which is good say. sometimes, yeah. For their first ever viewing, these two seem very realistic about what they can afford. So this is the master bedroom? Yeah, lovely. Mm. Really, really nice it's size. Good size, yeah. It? Surprised. I am very mindful of, of what you've sold in Wales. Yeah and what you're getting in London. Yeah, this is about the same size bedroom as we had in Wales, so yeah. that okay. is Ooh, brilliant. Great. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Have a look at the, uh, the other rooms. Yeah. Oh, this is a good size. The second bedroom shouldn't be a letdown either. Perfect for one family stay. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. A nice size garden. And that is a good outhouse. <laughs> Actual shed. Yeah, man cave. <laughs> I'm delighted with how they're reacting to this house. Uh, it's actually going much better than I dared hope for. However, it is their first viewing, and of course, they're excited. 
And it's a question of whether they're still excited once they've seen it all. It's not a bad garden, is it? It's huge. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And how do than... you get on with the rest of the house? The kitchen really isn't as, as big as we'd like it to be. In yes. terms of extending, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a big extension there yeah. that you can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very natural to, to imagine where it would go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Close, but no cigar fill. The compact kitchen has left them hungry for more space. And to get that, I need to take them out of their beloved rice slip. Wish me luck. This week, we're catching up on the stories of two very different property searches. Alex and his wife, Sarah, were relocating to West London for new jobs and were keen to find the perfect home. And in Hemel Hempstead in Hertfordshire, self-employed sales account manager Naomi was looking for a house for herself, her business, her cat and her pole. The average cost of property in Hemel Hempstead is close to £300,000, which is well within Naomi's budget of £350,000. But it's hard to put a price on her very unique requirements. Slightly unusually, I really need space for a pole. Yikes. Plus, we're dealing with a lost dream, a four-bed cottage she'd mentally moved into. Heart, soul and pole dancing pole. Then the vendors changed their minds about selling. It was in her number one location of Boxmoor, where we are beginning our search. And a rise in prices around here means she'd now struggle to find both the space and character she wants. So I'm hoping the charm of our first property will mean size doesn't matter. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous, it's stunning. isn't it? And that's the point. It's that really is gorgeous. entirely the point. It is a very pretty little house. She loves the look, however, little is the operative word for this Regency-style terrace. But it's big on charm, and there are certainly enough separate spaces to meet Naomi's specifics. Two bedrooms upstairs and two living areas downstairs equals a room enough for dance practice. There's also a storage cellar, and at the end of the garden, what I think to be a clever solution to the home office conundrum. Well under budget, at £275,000, I think this could totally fit the bill. Trust me. OK. Just, you're looking really nervous. <laughs> it feels quite dark mm -hmm. in this room, and I prefer kind of like a bit more modern open and plan. light yes. and open yeah. plan. So, I mean, it's beautiful, it's really beautiful. It's just whether or not it works for me. Do you want to cry? No, no, not yet. Let's see the working space, and then we'll work out if we want to cry after that. I guess that's a positive. I don't think tissues will be required once I've led Nemi up the garden path. Getting up every morning and walking to work. OK. The summer house already has electricity and a proper floor, so it could be the perfect home office. It's really cool and really lovely, but I wouldn't use this as an office because it's Definitely leaving not. the house. Goodness, I've only asked her to walk up the garden, not scale Everest every morning. Turns out Naomi's worried about her shy cat, who doesn't like to venture out. She's one of those cats that just chooses one owner. She's a house cat. So Naomi feels she needs to be in the house too. Shame, as this was a good one. Cat amongst the pigeons comes to mind. The cellar does have office potential, but only for hobbits, currently. Oh. <laughs> it could be dug out, but Naomi's not up for any major work. I think Naomi's problem is that she's failed to recognise that it's very difficult to get character and light space and open plan living. She may have found it once, but the market may now have got ahead of her. And it's hard enough to compete with the ghost of perfection without an ever-growing list of requirements. So, you have seen the depths? Yes. Would that be a suitable place for you to have an office? No. No, I didn't think I'm so. I'm only <laughs> five foot four and I can't stand no, no, up no, in no. it. No, for me, this house doesn't work for you if a garden office isn't an option. No, I agree with you. I think if it was just me on my own and I wasn't working and I didn't need a pole, then this is perfect. But I need all of those things. I think that might be a pole light refusal, Kirsty. Well, she might want character, but I say move over Victorian. It's a Naomian style house we need to find. Back in London with professional rugby player Alex and teacher wife Sarah. And after popping their London property viewing cherry, things were going well. Really, really nice size. Good size, yeah, it? surprised. 
but it was smaller than they wanted downstairs. So to get them more space, I'm taking a bit of a risk and moving my search from their favorite but costly spot of rice slip to Hillingdon, just a few miles down the road. Three bed houses here are close to 100 grand less than in rice slip. And with plenty of shops to satisfy our youngsters' needs, Hillingdon could suit them to a tee. Their commute would remain under half an hour, and the property I found them is much bigger than the previous one. Fantastic. Room for me too, then. As you can see, it's a nice residential family area. It's a busy road, but it's a 20 mile an hour zone. And this is rush hour now, basically. Yes, yeah. Yeah. This is as busy as it's going to get. Yeah. I sound like a salesperson. I have, no reason, <laughs> I have no reason to want you to buy this house above yeah. any other. I'm just pointing exactly. out the bleeding obvious. Yes. Yep. Thanks for your input, Kirsty. Always happy to help, Pip. This house is a gem. Not only offering fabulous entertaining space and open plan kitchen, which is bigger than the last property, it also has a third bedroom. And I would imagine the garden ought to score points with Alex. This place needs no work. It may be marketed at five grand over budget, but the vendors have offered on somewhere else and are looking for a quick sale. First impressions out of ten? Ten. Yeah, about an eight. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, it's nice. Ooh. It's very nice. Nice, nice size. Well. <laughs> See if we can get a little higher. Okay. <laughs> That's not legal, Phil, or advisable. <laughs> <laughs> and then through to kitchen and a massive oh, wow. space. Okay. That's brilliant. Yeah. That is the entertaining space we were after, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a really sociable space. It's also yeah. a very nice family space. If there was any small people, and I'm not bullying you, <laughs> you could see them. And then there's an added bonus in the garden, isn't there, Phil? There is. A couple of outhouses that I think Alex will appreciate. Have a look in there. <laughs> I like that. It's always handy to have a bit of, uh, bit of outdoor space for your tools. I'm the same, love a shed. Yeah, I like it. Obviously, there's a lot more space. But it's whether the space warrants moving out of rice slip. Okay, I'll get one. back to you on that okay, one. <laughs> I don't think it's Alex who'll be making that call, Phil. I haven't seen the other house Phil showed you. No. How do you feel it compared? I think the compromise will come with the area, but the house itself is, is beautiful. The house is a hit, but it is called Location, Location, Location for a reason. Got me a little pew. What? Your colour's turned up. Oh, there we are. So, what was it like um, in the garden? Um, he, he's been very positive. What does Sarah say upstairs? She is slightly less keen on the area than on rice lip. Do you get, you get a lot more for your money here than in rice lip? Yeah, you do. Any kind of buying signals? Any, any lights being turned on? Any Phil, excitement? it's day one. She's seen two houses. They've come a long way. Yes, but this market waits for no man or woman. Well, it's a bonus, isn't it? Third bedroom. Yeah, this works perfectly as an office. So. Yeah, space for me to do my work. Mm -hmm. Rugby, your game, Phil? Oh, yeah, yeah, used to be. Slow and steadier pace is what you need these days, isn't it? You couldn't really. Where, where are you going with that? <laughs> and I can't bust it with the big guys on the rugby pits. I can't have you know in my day. I dread to think, but this is today, and I want to know what these two think of this house. It is really nice. Yeah. It's really, really oh, nice. I can hear a butt. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It is a butt. The feeling we got from the other house, with it being close to the high street, we sort of preferred that more central mm -hmm. um, feel. Even though this house is much bigger mm. and essentially much nicer than the other one, I just haven't got that feeling. That's fine. It's OK. You've seen... <laughs> it's so OK. We're not here to... <laughs> no. This is the house for you. Phil's job is, in your case... She's my... about to tell me what yeah. my job is. <laughs> what Phil's job is is to show you the best of what's available yeah. in different prices, different areas, different sizes. OK. But if it doesn't make your heart flutter, it doesn't make your heart flutter. Quite right, Kirsty. But I'm afraid hearing a no in this market's enough to give this property finder palpitations. Back in Hemel Hempstead with cat-loving, pole-dancing, strong woman competitor Naomi, we're in her current neighbourhood of Apsley, where you get a little more for your money than in Boxmoor. This search is very much about the right layout, so I'm hoping my second property is sufficiently more near me shaped. What would you need to find inside this house to make it one that you think you would want to live in? Just, um, just all the space, really. I'm not saying a word, except that I'm as pleased as punch about this house. 
the property's just been relisted after an overseas buyer recently pulled out of a sale. And there's already three offers on the table. But I know the vendor wants a quick sale to a chain-free buyer like Nemi, so we've scored a viewing. With three bedrooms over the top two floors, I really think I've got the home office option nailed here. On the ground level, there's even two pole position options. The dining area or the front room. So the right size, no work, a big garden and some character, all for £325,000. Twenty-five grand under budget. What's not to love? OK, so at thumbs up, I mean, yeah. big thumb, but... Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, I think, because I've only really looked at places that have been perfect inside and out. Right, There is that okay. element of, oh, my God, it's my responsibility to try and make it look nice. I hope that's just a minor concern, because it's just cosmetic stuff. Although, she could be brave and open things up. So this is the wall that will come down. So this would be all one fantastic okay. light space. Yeah. Off the kitchen's a great patio area for summer dining, and there's also an impressive back garden, with no chance of being banished to the bottom of it. There is a hut at the bottom, but it's not one I'm going to put you in. OK, that makes me feel happier. <laughs> I'm hoping for even higher levels of happiness once Naomi sees exactly which room she could designate as her home office. So, welcome to the top of the world. Oh, cool. The loft conversion gives her the ideal cat-accessible home office, complete with its own bathroom. This home offers the lot. So why am I getting a not-convinced vibe from Naomi? I've seen houses on this street yep. that have been done much nicer with similar space yeah. below 300. Would you pay 330 for this? No. I think it's the space is brilliant. Yeah. And I do think that you could move in and do stuff to it. Yeah. But it does seem to be kind of like a bit of a hard slog and not having that wow feeling to maybe try to get it there. So what you're looking for is something in much more finished state than this to give you that wow feeling. I think Ideally, yeah. If this house doesn't match up, Naomi's clearly chasing an idea of perfection which, in a rising market, may be beyond her means. I'm a bit flummoxed by that. I don't know what to say. I think this house is in really quite good nick and doesn't need much work at all. So that's a bit of a shock. Is it me or is it her? Either way, if it don't fit, we can't force it. But if I'm to stand any chance of finding her a home, something's got to give on that very fixed wish list. And even then, Naomi may have to stretch her budget, or there'll be no dancing, pole or otherwise. Onwards and upwards. It's a new day with Sarah and Alex, and for their third ever London viewing, I'm keen to show these new kids on the block another spot they don't know. 17 miles northwest of the centre of London is Bushy, just eight miles from the pair's favourite postcode. A popular location, it offers a similar independent high street to what Alex and Sarah had in Wales, though I am pushing Alex's commute to a 40-minute drive. But for the couple who adore period properties, here they can afford this beautiful Victorian semi. It's kind of village life. It is, yeah, yeah it seems, it that, seems way, yeah. that way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice atmosphere. First thoughts of the house? Very different to yesterday's. It's beautiful. Quite cute looking. Wait yes. till you get inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are original period features galore in this two bed house. It also has a garden with a dinky shed for Alex's tools. And they don't have to pay top dollar to be in this villagey spot. It's 25 grand under budget. Come on in. <laughs> oh, lovely. Really um, like the character. Yeah, I, I love the flooring. <laughs> yeah. I noticed there was five places lovely as well. Yeah, beautiful. It's smaller than where we were in Hillingdon. Really, yes, OK, mm. yeah. So it depends how much value you put on... Character. He's got it. Periods pleasing them. I hope the rest matches up. Oh, wow. Brilliant. Well, yeah. Again, a really nice Very good size. room. And you don't seem to have been phased by the distance, the commute. No, it's, it's, it's a little bit so. further for me, yeah. but that's not an issue. I don't really travel in peak times. It's on the market at 385. OK. OK. Um, but I'm afraid there was an offer on it yesterday. Right? OK. 
If you don't want it, it'll go tomorrow. Sure, OK. Big decisions yeah. tonight, then. I'm afraid so. <laughs> With a great layout and fresh decor, this house really is an easy option for these two. Good size. It is a good size, yeah. Good space for clothes, though. <laughs> That'll um, be yours, then. <laughs> he's a keeper, Sarah. Mm. I like it. I like it a lot, yeah. <laughs> do you like it more than the rice lip one? The downstairs, I do. It's a dilemma. Do they take a chance on an unknown area to gain character? How'd you get on? We very really confused. like it. We're very confused, <laughs> yeah. Where, yes. Where's the confusion? Between this one and the rice lip house. Right. The potential of the, the rice lip yeah. house. If you took that house and this house right now, forget mm. about the location, I think we'd say this house. Yep. But if we imagine that in our heads what the rice lip one could look like, then that, then would... that one starts to yeah. take out take over, doesn't it? Because you could put character and interest into that. That's one. exactly it. Yes. What I'm trying to do is show you different options just to make you think. They're definitely making us think. <laughs> yeah, you're doing that all right. <laughs> Props to you, Phil. This bushy house is in the running. I just hope their confusion won't mean this or the rice slip house slip through their fingers. This week, we're catching up with two southern searches. Alex and Sarah were relocating from the Welsh coast to West London and were struggling to decide between a pristine house in a location they didn't know and a house with bags of potential in their ideal area of Ricelip. And in Hamel Hempstead, Kirsty's hunt for strong woman Naomi's character house with a fine finish and space for a pole dancing pole was proving taxing. I wouldn't use this as an office. I'm at my wit's end. Never fear, Phil's wits are here. The sun's gone in. Yes. And I think this is a sign. Let's not get too dramatic just yet. Hello. Good morning. Good How are you? morning. Well, our options are thin on the ground. And although she didn't love it, the second property I showed Naomi has just gone under offer. So I'm going off piste for this one. I know it's not her preferred style. I thought going through this process would probably open my eyes a little bit to other opportunities. Well, it's going to open your eyes this morning okay. with this house. OK. What this modern three-storey townhouse may lack in character, it makes up for in square feet, almost 1,200 of them. There are two bedrooms on the top level, a sitting room and third bedroom on the middle level, and a great dining kitchen on the ground floor. As it's only three years old, there's no upgrading required, and it even comes with a garage. However, to have all this, she would have to dip into her reserves. The asking price is just under £390,000, although I think a deal could be struck for less. And we're talking a lot of bang for buck. It's big. It, it is. It's really big. Yeah. Given that this isn't even the living room, which is just a kitchen diner. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's really big. There's space for my pole, space for table and chairs. Well, the place works for the pole, but does that mean it works for Naomi? Onwards and upwards. On the next level is the second sitting room. I'm really hoping Naomi can see herself sitting here. It's quite sort of very blatantly characterless, but then maybe there's some clever things you can do with decorating it to try and yeah. sort of breathe some life into it. Yeah. That dancing pole will certainly add some pizzazz, and the bedroom next to the sitting room would make the perfect office. Work your magic there, please, Phil. I think it would be extraordinarily difficult to find a dedicated office space downstairs within a character property at your budget. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have looked at a townhouse before, mainly because they are quite new, yeah. um, but it could work quite nicely for me in terms of space and, and layout and Good. closing doors to things. Good. I think I've done quite well in warming Naomi up to the positives, but this search has clearly been Naomi in feet for you, Kirsty. Even if someone starts off looking for character, eventually the requirement for space outplays character, outplays yeah. the desire for character. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. I know, I know. Cheer you know up what? a I'm bit. Like, I like people to do work, to add value, to, you know, you know me. Oh. <laughs> You're just struggling with the pole. No, I'm not. I'm I think not. it's a terrific idea and should be encouraged. It should be in all homes. 
I should have banned you from this search. I should have headed this off at the pass. Just as well you didn't, I've now got a great idea for your next Christmas present. And I've helped Naomi see the advantages of this kind of property. It's really nice. It's really spacious. Garage is fantastic. You can put strongman equipment in there, which is brilliant. Mm -hmm. The space is fantastic. Really fantastic. So, yeah. It sounds like there's a contender here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It'd be nice yeah. to have like another quick Swiss round yeah. and, go and have a Swiss round. start re looking at things. Go, go in, go in. It's all yours. Go and have a Swiss I'm round. Off. I'm going. You've got as much time as you want. Brave girl, because she has, she's completely accepted it. I wish you'd this. accept things as fast. <laughs> I'll ignore that. Back in West London, Alex and Sarah have decided to take another look at property number one in their favourite area, Ricelip. They both love the house, but are keen to see if it could be made bigger and better downstairs. And to help them decide, I've invited Bill the Builder round, who's recently extended a kitchen at a property round the corner. Well, I think just to fill, fill in this corner here, you would be looking at somewhere around 15,000, but then you would still be left with substantial works to do to the existing extension okay. to bring it up to current regulations. I think if you just demolish the whole thing, start again, yep. you'd be looking at somewhere around 25 to 28,000. That's sort of the budget that we were, were thinking of. It would be big space. I mean, all of these nice. options. Yeah. Are... Yeah. yeah. When can you start? <laughs> As far as Sarah's concerned, you can get the sledgehammer out right now, Phil. So, where would you put the bed? It's there. Have to go there, wouldn't it? Oh, she's lying down. <laughs> Property viewing is tiring. Indeed, but despite everything measuring up nicely, I don't think our day's work's over yet. Do you love it? We would love it if the extension was done. They've made their decision. Now it's down to their money and your metal. Over in Hemel Hempstead, I've just got one contender too. But my new build was a wild card for Naomi, so she wants to be sure we haven't overlooked a better character property. That is quite a few properties. This is quite a few properties. I think she'll find we've been rigorous in our search and selected the best options from all the properties currently available to view. Nope. Well, it's good when your nose and our nose match up. I thought it might have been an easier search. I didn't think I'd be a difficult one. You're not difficult. <laughs> they, I mean, no one has said that you're difficult, although that sodding pole, but... <laughs> I thought my premises were quite flexible, you know, they are... space for a pole and an yeah. office. Yeah. <laughs> and character and no work required. Tell me what you're, what, what you're feeling about the third property now. There's a gaping hole in my heart that says there's no character, but there were so many other better things, so... Do you just take the plunge and just go for it? Or are you going to be really upset if something else comes up next week and you've already made that decision? If the pros of the townhouse can't swing a decision, what will? If I was going to give you any piece of advice for this search, for you to succeed, try and ignore the look of the house. OK. With all her requirements, Naomi can't worry about character two, or she could be searching forever. So, while Naomi continues the search, I'm hoping for a better result for Alex and Sarah in West London. After a second visit to the 1930s two-bed in Ricelip, the couple were really excited by its potential, but are they ready to take the plunge? So what do you want to do about it? Well, I'm going to make an offer. Yes, please. I'd yeah. ask him price. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I think that's sensible. You told them at the start not to delay, and they certainly haven't. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try and tidy this up. Okay. Oh -oh. <laughs> I have to get this place for 380 grand, or they simply can't afford to do the eventual building work. Hi, Josh, it's Phil. I'm going to make this really easy for you. <laughs> Alex and Sarah would be happy to pay the asking price of 380000 There's been another asking price offer, but the vendor hasn't accepted it. So, with the house still on the market, my job isn't about buying a house, it's about selling Alex and Sarah as committed buyers. They have a deposit of about 130000 Thanks, Josh. Bye. It's owned by an investor. He's going to try and get hold of them right away. Thank you. Ooh, breathe. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now it's just a waiting game. Here we go. Josh, hi there. Mm hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent news. So, 380, all agreed. That's fantastic news. Very, very happy at this end. Thanks so much for your help. Cheers. Bye. Everyone's a winner. Well done. <laughs> well done indeed. Thank you very much. 380 mm. off Thank the market. You. <laughs> Does that really uh, feel real? No, you've just spent 300. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah so it is oh. real. <laughs> oh, God. In the end, there was no confusion from this pair. Sometimes property can be simple, and the right house at the right price makes a very happy ending. We'll raise a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Three months later, and Alex and Sarah are still pretty chuffed, having just picked up the keys for their rice slip home. It's taken quite a while, probably, probably about eight weeks. We finally got the house and it's ours now. But it hasn't all been straightforward. Someone that offered another £10,000. Yeah, so it came back for us and asked us for more, more money. More money. So within a couple of days of expecting to get the keys, we had to go up another £5,000. This determined pair negotiated hard and agreed on a final price of £385,000. They fought for their new home and now they can focus on making it their own. Uh, we had an architect come round to um, make some drawings up for the extension that we want to, want to go ahead with. The actual extension work is going to take eight to ten weeks. Yeah, We're happy to wait so we get the house right before we move in. And I'm sure it'll all be worth waiting for. Phil was brilliant. Yeah, yeah really some good advice task. as well. Yeah, good um, advice. Yeah. Previously being a surveyor, he was really able to help us with uh, you know, the regulations for the extension and things like that. Yeah. Get back, Kirsty, a man of many talents, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that extension turns out. <laughs> Naomi chose not to take the plunge on the townhouse, but did take Kirsty's advice on board and carried on her very specific search with fresh eyes. Kirsty did really help me, 100%. I think she gave me that confidence to just say, do you know what, if you find it and you love it, just buy it. Now, almost a year on, did saleswoman Naomi find that perfect place for her business, her cat and, of course, her pole? Well, with Kirsty's words ringing in her ears, Naomi decided to take the plunge on a property in her favourite area, Boxmoor. But she had to push her budget to do it. I found this property online and it was literally just the most amazing house ever. It was slightly out of my price range. It was on at 380, which was so far out of what I could afford. I was told there was another party and I went up as far as 370. They put in a higher offer and the house was gone. So I just kind of shelved it and didn't really think about it again. But having lost out on her dream home before our search, Naomi was definitely due a break. And in a twist of fate, she received a call from the vendors a few weeks later to say the sale had fallen through. After resubmitting her top offer of £370,000, she became the very proud owner of this beautiful two-bed mid-terraced house. It's really funny because a lot of friends told me that when that last one went wrong that this one was going to be better and I just didn't believe them for a second but actually this house is so much nicer than the first one. Split over four floors, this place has more space than Naomi could have wished for. It has the two bedrooms she was after, both doubles, an office space and the added bonus of a roof terrace. The character is inside and out. You've got the high ceilings, you've got the wood-burning stove, um, just all these kind of cutesy, quirky little things. I'm just an incredibly lucky girl. Well, in property, I believe you make your own luck. Naomi held out and got the place she wanted. And I'd say this house really is poles apart from all of the others. And talking of poles... It's great having it right bang in the living room because it means every time you walk past it, you can kind of do a little pull up or do a little move or have a little spin around it. As well as getting herself in a spin, Naomi also bagged herself the perfect office space to run her business from. Hello, Naomi speaking. It's funny, I feel more professional because I'm actually in a designated working environment rather than being in a living room. 
can close the door on it. I don't have to look at laptops and I don't have to look at my catalogues in the evening. Leaving more time for training. Naomi's picked up first prize at a strong woman competition and is gearing up for more events this year. It's all come together for Naomi, but what about her furry friend, Leia? She's living the dream. She's ripping up carpets, she's stalking the neighbours' cats. She's loving every minute of it. This house has actually really changed my life. I feel so much calmer, I feel much more positive. I absolutely love this place and I'm, I'm here to stay. I'm delighted for her that she finally found her dream home and is so happy here. And I can't wait to see how Sarah and Alex are settling into London life. It was just over a year ago that I helped a young couple, Alex and Sarah, up sticks and move from Wales to London. I struck it lucky with the very first house that I showed them. But I hear they've been making some changes, so I'll come back to take a look. Sarah and Alex bought this 1930s two-bed mid-terrace. With two reception rooms and a small kitchen downstairs, they were keen to create the space they craved and make it their own. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Hi, how are you doing? Do you want to come and see what we've done? I can't wait to see what we've done. The couple have really gone to town decorating the interior, completely transforming everything from the downstairs living space to the bedrooms upstairs. And as planned, they extended at the back, replacing the original box kitchen with this spectacular kitchen diner. Oh my goodness me! Wow! <laughs> Jeez! What a change! Like I knew change, you were going to yeah. extend there or try and extend, but that is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. Thanks, we like it. Yeah, we're really pleased. It's light, it's bright. We've exactly. had ten months at my mum and dad's um, and we just let the builders get on with it. It made it a bit easier for them, really. They didn't yeah. have to put the water back on or yeah. things like that. The couple really haven't been shy in putting their own stamp on the place. Love the ladder bookshelf. And there's clearly a lot of thought gone into the detail and extra touches. And there's even some hidden gems. Pushing. Oh, very fancy. Yes. Yeah. Utility. Utility. Love the lights. Yeah, I was really pleased with those. Originally, I thought they were going to be sort of this level, but then when they, they put them in, they obviously just add so much height yeah. to it, which is nice. I, I am quite blown away. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Very pleased. <laughs> The high-spec finish has cost them. All in, the couple spent £50,000, more than a little over their original 30 grand budget. Unfortunately, yeah. I think, being our first build, we just weren't aware of all the hidden costs. Certain things you want and certain things you, you can't not have, so yeah. Yeah. we wanted a nice house and you've got to pay for that, I suppose. Yeah. Alex, I remember you saying you wanted to get your hands dirty and get stuck in. Yeah. Did you, did you get involved? I did a bit, yeah. I did um... more than a bit. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, there's obviously certain things I could do, um, like sort of manual labour, digging up the patio. Unfortunately for Alex and Sarah, their back garden took a bit of a beating with the renovations, and unlike the rest of the house, it's not quite finished. So smart new patio, yes. slightly destroyed garden, yes. and a new looking shed. <laughs> yes. Well, the garden's a lot better than it was last week. A man after my own heart. Alex was keen on an outside space to keep his tools, but it seems he's taken it one step further and is turning it into his very own man cave. Put my bits and pieces in. I've got a nice armchair as well in case I need to <laughs> escape. <laughs> I won't say anything. No, don't. <laughs> Steady on, Alex. You've only just moved in. These guys certainly haven't held back in creating the perfect space for their new start in London. All very smart in here, but I don't remember the fireplace. No, the fireplace is um, new. We had it opened up. So um, what was there before? Nothing. In nope. the fireplace, it was just straight down. Um, mm. That was one of the first things I did. I got a hammer and chisel and just knocked it away. <laughs> so I wanted to see what was inside. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, uh, Lovely. They, they really nice. It, yeah. Did you enjoy the process? Looking back. Yeah, looking back, there were, there were days where I thought, this is getting a bit tedious now, doing sort of all the grafting bits and pieces, then training. And then yeah. come in the next day and paint in for nine, ten hours and then go and train in. But <laughs> it's, all, it's all worth it now, definitely. It has been yeah. worth it. Yeah. Every time you come in that door and yeah. you walk through here, you're going, yeah, I did this. And it's ours. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a nice thought to remember. Mm. 
these guys were very lucky to fall in love with the first house they viewed and to snap it up, especially in London. To think that this was the very first house that we looked at together. In fact, it was the first, you, hadn't, you hadn't seen any, had no. you? No, no. It was the first out of yeah. all of them. In that climate at, at the time, you know, prices were moving every week. And, and I was worried if, if we didn't get something, it was going to get away from you. I think you definitely got that point across to us. So that's why yeah. we were so keen just to, to, to follow your advice and, and go for it, really. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we would have got something without you. So thank you. Tell me about London life. How's that been? Like? Yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. It's um, obviously all Sarah's family here. I've got friends here as well, so it's nice to catch up with them. Yeah. Um, all the guys at the club have been great, so it's um, yeah, it's been it's been it's been great. It's been very much the right move. Yes, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. And can I take it that it's home for a while? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. About hopefully about five years, and obviously we'll see what, see what happens. Yeah. Well, here's to you both. <laughs> Many <laughs> congratulations. Very nice to see you both. In this lovely kitchen. Thank you. I'm jealous. <laughs> you know what? Move in. You can. Well, it's great to see Alex and Sarah finally moved in and really getting to enjoy what they've turned into a fantastic home. Naomi fell head over heels with her place and it did eventually tick every single one of her boxes. So I guess. Sometimes it's love at first sight, and sometimes you just gotta carry on looking.